Hi. In this short video, we're going to quickly run through everything you need to know to get up and running with RenderGarden for local and network rendering. Please check out our full-length guided tours for in-depth tutorials. The RenderGarden submit script is located in the After Effects window menu. When first run, you need to set up a few preferences to tell RenderGarden where Python, FFmpeg, and your seed bank are located. Please check out the detailed setup tutorials located on our website for more information. Once these preps are set, you can dock the minimize palette into your After Effects workspace and start the render setup process. RenderGarden splits your comps up into multiple segments, which get concurrently rendered. We call these segments seeds. On a single computer setup, a safe rule of thumb is to set the number of seeds to half the number of physical cores in your computer. In this case, I'm working on a 12-core Mac Pro, so I'll set the seeds to 6. I'm rendering a QuickTime ProRes HQ movie set in the AE Render Queue, but I want an MP4 viewing copy as well, which I can set in the RenderGarden post-render actions. After duplicating my previous render settings in the After Effects Render Queue, I specify a file name and path, then instead of hitting the Render button in the Render Queue, I submit my comp by clicking the Plant the Seeds button in the RenderGarden Script UI panel. A dialog pops up asking me how many Gardener processes to launch. It says I'm currently running zero, so I'll up this to six to match the number of seeds I selected. When I click OK, RenderGarden automatically opens a seed bank folder, along with the six gardeners displayed in separate command line shells. Each gardener picks up one sixth of the comp and starts rendering this segment. You can look at the frame numbers in the shell to see which frames each gardener is rendering. The top left is rendering zero through 41, the bottom left is rendering 42 through 82, and so on. In the seed bank folder, you see eight render garden files. The bottom six files are the comp segments currently rendering. The top render garden file is the combined to concatenate all six segments into the final single movie. This file is waiting for all six segments to complete before it is automatically run. Finally, the second render garden file is the MP4 post render action, which is waiting for the combiner to run and finish. The prefix of all these render garden file names are automatically renamed during the rendering process from ready to rendering to complete. The source folder contains a duplicate of the After Effects project being rendered. This is a great safety net in case you accidentally change your After Effects project and later need to find the original that created this specific render. The segments folder reveals the six QuickTime movie segments being rendered to disk. After the segments are combined, your finished movie can be found in the directory specified in the After Effects render queue. The output folder is a shortcut to your final movie. Finally, the scripts folder contains the executable scripts which the render garden files are triggering. You can double click these scripts to manually run segments, but for the most part you don't need to worry about these. Looking at the activity monitor, you can see that six instances of AE render core are running, one for each gardener. Since this computer has 12 physical cores, the operating system sees it as 24 virtual cores. If all 24 virtual cores are using 100%, then combined it is using 2400% of the CPU. In the case of this render, the six AE render cores vary CPU usage between 100% and 600%, so any given frame may be using a combined 1800% of the CPU, which leaves 400% available for other tasks, such as 50% going to the After Effects GUI running below them. After about 20 minutes of rendering, you can see the top left gardener complete its 41 frames first, followed by the bottom left gardener. If you look in the seed bank folder, you can see that the file name prefixes on seed one and two have been updated to complete. The two gardener shells that finished are now sitting idle, waiting for the next seed to start rendering. Once seed six completes, the bottom left gardener picked up the combined task and the middle right gardener picked up the MP4 post render action. Now that everything is complete, the gardeners are all sitting idle waiting for another seed to be planted. You can quickly get to your final QuickTime and MP4 by opening the output folder in the seed bank and check out the final rendered movies. Network rendering with RenderGarden is simple to set up and allows you to use any extra computers laying around to maximize your render speed. In this case, we're going to render the comp to the 12-core workstation submitting the job, along with three additional 12-core render nodes. We want to run six gardeners on the four machines, so we'll plant 24 seeds. 
The dialogue asks us how many more gardeners we want to launch on the local machine. It tells us that we still have the six previously used gardeners opening and running in the background, so in this case we don't need to add any more and can leave the pop-up at zero. The seed bank for this project shows that 16 of the 24 seeds have been picked up by active gardeners. We can reveal the six gardeners running on the local machine, and using remote desktop we can see two other workstations each had six gardeners running which previously picked up the seeds. This third render node does not have any gardeners launched yet, so we can easily add them by clicking on the standalone gardener utility. A small Python window opens allowing us to launch gardeners on this node. After choosing six gardeners, we need to find the same seed bank specified in the submit script's preferences, and the gardeners will begin to contribute to the network rendering. Note that in order for network rendering to work, you need your After Effects project, source media, and render directory to all be on the same shared volume. Additionally, every render node will need plugins licensed and fonts installed, as well as FFmpeg installed in the same directory on every node. FFmpeg concatenates the final movie and saves it to the output directory specified in the After Effects render queue. Thanks for taking the time to watch this quick start video, and to learn more, please watch our detailed guided tours. Thanks again.